So let's talk about mixing. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little scared to even broach the subject of mixing with the self-righteous producer life kids in their parents' basements just waiting to come out of the woodworks and roast me on this one. But that's precisely why I'm making this video in the first place. Mixing is the most common thing that comes up in the music maker world. I get asked about it constantly. But I believe if people had a better understanding of what mixing is and how it works, then it wouldn't be a problem to begin with. I feel like we've taken a relatively simple concept and complicated the shit out of it. And if you understand the way mixing works, the easier it's going to be going into mixing your own music. It seriously doesn't have to be that hard. And not only that, there is a lot that one can do to help prepare for a good mix. Not everything can be fixed in the mix and especially not in the master. <sighs> Now, I haven't done something like this before, but this motherfucker pops up on my Instagram feed on a daily basis, telling me about his 25 years as a mixing engineer for all these Grammy award winning artists. And if you buy his course, you'll be able to mix just like him and have your track sound like Ed Sheeran, right? Maybe, maybe. So what is mixing? It's the blending of sound together to create something balanced. Making sure that every element in your music has its own place in the frequency spectrum. It can be heard clearly and that it isn't competing with anything else. So let's take a look at this in one of its most simplest forms. Think about a sound engineer mixing a band to play live. The sound dude gets on stage and they mic up the drum kit. Then they DI the bass, they plug in the key, grabs a microphone for the vocalist and throws a 57 on the guitar amp. Then all those cables are sent back to the mixing desk and perhaps they have a 16 channel desk. Eight channels for the drums and then eight channels for everything else. And what does this engineer have on this mixing desk? They have a channel fader for each track, a left and right panning dial, and perhaps a three or four band EQ. There may even be a couple of sends to some return effects like some delay or some reverb. Now, the band gets on stage and they go through sound check. They'll probably start with the drums, most likely the kick. The mixing engineer brings up the level of the kick drum and herein starts the mixing process. Can we hear it? Levels. Is it sitting in the right place? Panning. Can we feel it? EQ. Is it competing with any other elements? Also EQ. Does it need a little bit of spice on top? Sends. Then the same process is repeated with the snare drum and the toms and the cymbals and then eventually the rest of the band. Levels, panning, EQ, levels, panning, EQ, levels, panning, EQ, over and over again on every single element. We took essentially a simple process and complicated the shit out of it. Plugins and courses with the secrets of mixing and endless tutorials. And if we look back on a previous video I made about the necessary elements in your music, if you have 17 instances of serum in your project all playing leads and pads and atmospheres, then yeah, your mix is going to suffer a slow death as you try to balance out all these sounds and have them not compete with one another. It's like trying to squeeze a square peg into a round hole. Or like that clip of Ernie from Sesame Street rearranging the cookies on the plate, trying to convince Bert that there's a different number of cookies on the plate each time he rearranges them. No matter how you arrange them on the plate, it's still only four cookies, not five. You won't be able to mix your way out of a poor composition. If your track is too full, it's too fucking full. Selecting the right sounds, samples and instrumentation certainly can't be overlooked. Everything has to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And each piece of the puzzle has to be well selected. And each piece that we select has to be from the same puzzle. And if you master the basics of levels, panning and EQ, then your mixes will do just fine. Levels. Can you hear it? Or does it stand out? Panning. 
placing things around the stereo field. Not everything has to be straight down the center. EQ, clearing away unwanted frequencies or enhancing desired frequencies. And finally, adding a little bit of spice on top to bring some of your elements to life. It really doesn't have to be that hard. And yes, you can mix an entire piece of music within your chosen DAW without a single third party plugin. We can choose to complicate the hell out of mixing if we want to, and we can go down that path. You may see a slight increase in the results of your mixing, but I guarantee you that mixing probably isn't the issue with your music. It's the music. If you focus on the music, take a simplistic, holistic approach to mixing in general, I think you'd find a lot more satisfaction with the final result. There you go. Just saved you 600 pounds. You're welcome. I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who's bought me a coffee to help support this channel. I really appreciate it. As you may be aware, I don't monetize these videos and I don't do paid promotions, but if you do love what I do and you'd like to support, then perhaps you might consider buying me a coffee. There's a link in the description. And a big thank you to everyone who pre-ordered my latest remix. It is out now on Beatport. If you would like to go check that out, there is also a link in the description for that too. But I'm gonna sign off for now. If you did like this video, then please remember to subscribe. It really does help. And and be sure to give this video a thumbs up also. Until next time, keep creating. Bye for now.